And to those of you who are watching this uh, on your computers at home, good morning to you as well. Um, we love you and we hope that God will bless you today. To all of you who are here today, may you be blessed and well and safe and may all be well for you in this holiday season. Um, if you have, uh, the restrooms are in, down through this hallway to the left. And, uh, and there is coffee hour after church, and I've, I've seen some pretty nice treats in there. So I go downstairs after church to the parlor, and uh, the Grahams have uh, given us a treat. So uh, thank you for that, Norm and Cindy. Are there announcements to make this morning? Yes. This Saturday is our open house on December 10th from 1 to 5 um, at our new house. There's directions um, by the sign-up sheet and come even if you don't sign up or um, you don't have to bring something. Um, <coughs> the directions are in the Colonial Hospital. Yeah, there's a number of things. Yes, Barbara? I, I see you. Go ahead, Go ahead Barbara. <laughs> well, I do, there's a quarterly fund that the United Church of Christ uh, were asked to donate to for this, for this holiday season in December. It is their Christmas fund. Come on up here then. Come on up. Come on up. facing challenging financial situations. Um, so across the whole you know, body of the United Church of Christ, congregations and individuals give, so this um, ministry can help uh, those who are having difficult times. And also they can have like an actual check for a Christmas time for the retired clergy. Anyway, so we're asked to donate and eventually the next week or so, there will be envelopes in our bulletin for that. So, just wanted to let y'all know about that. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Sonia, I see you, and Mike, I see you too. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sonia. Maggie wanted me to remind everybody that the uh, holiday um, bake sale order forms are due today. There are extra ones out uh, on the table. If you have any questions, her email and uh, phone number are on those forms. And also, um, they will be delivered during coffee hour down in the dining room, December 18th. Thank you. All right. Yes, Joy, you're making the announcement. Yes? I guess I am. Um, <laughs> Susie, Gus's um, couldn't be here today. So she asked me to say that Grace Community, we're doing a Christmas tree this year. We don't have any names. They haven't contacted us with that. I've got them. Oh, you've got me? Yep. Okay, then that changes everything. So <laughs> um, I guess we're going to names on the tree. We're going to do mittens and gloves and hats and food. I can give this to you. And here's what it is. We are doing one family. It's not hard. There are three people. It's a woman with two sons. And so I need three people to volunteer, and you need to write your name down to bring it. And, um, and also you need to see Sonia, because we're going to try to make sure we help the mother write. But uh, I need three people to go see Joy, take one of these, and have her write their names down, and we will take care of Grace Community Center this year. Yes, we will. <laughs> Thank you. One item. Bob? I see there's only one slot left open for uh, ringing the uh, Salvation Army bell next Saturday at Kroger's, Detroit, and uh, Glendale. 
Uh, the slot from 2 to 3, I'll be glad to spend that last hour myself over there. And uh, if someone, single person, wants to uh, join me, certainly would appreciate it. But thanks a million for filling that out. We were out of town for a week, and uh, uh, glad to see this sign up. So thank you, everyone, for signing up. Thank you, Bob. It's a great ministry, and you've been uh, organizing it for years. One of the really good things about the Salvation Army is that they are very responsible with their money. The money that goes in uh, gets put to good use. They're a very uh, a good outcome in that way. Yes, Serena. Uh, so this is my senior year. As everybody knows, I am doing one of my final plays this year. It is called Bad Auditions for Bad Actors. It is going to be at Toledo Early College at the Driscoll Center on Bancroft. I can give everybody the um, address. Tickets are free if anybody would like to come. It is December 19th, which is a Monday, I think. And it's uh, from 6 to 6.45. It's a really short play, but it's going to be a lot of fun. If you would give that on a piece of paper to me, we can have uh, Karen put that in the, the weekly printout or, or email. Yes, Christina. Sienna is too shy to announce it, so I'm doing it for her. This Thursday at 7 o'clock, she is having her first orchestra performance at Bowser. Um, so she's very excited. She's playing the cello. So if anybody would like to come out and support her, it is Thursday at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Where? <coughs> Think? Yes. I think we've had all of our announcements. Let's take a breath. <laughs> that was a nice breath. Um, let's love each other, the ones around us and the whole world. Let's love God. Let's worship.
the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. We light two candles, two purple candles, in love and joy. Please join us as we pray together. God of love, we thank you for bringing the light of Christ into the world. May we have a care of the mother of Jesus, we pray the love that changes the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So please stand if you are able for our first hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, and the words on the back of the Lord.
not pass the plate at this time, so if you're so inclined to give, the plates are on the front table if you wish to put an offering in at the end of the service. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of knowledge and truth, bless our grace. We thank you for the ability to share the bounty of treasure, time, and talent you have given us. Help us choose these gifts to further your mission in the Lord. Amen. We have not been passing the offering plate for two years now. If you wish to give something to the church or to uh, just put in the offering plate at any time that you would like, uh, but while you're taking the you, you could, but at any time, and, and Bill and Jan are very good to, to take that and count that after church, so thank you for that. Also, those of you that haven't made pledges yet and would like to, Gary would be happy if you would do that, and uh, we thank you for what has been a hundred and some years of support. Thank you for um, that these last couple of years, even during the pandemic, there's been such strong support for the work here. Jan? The plate curves will on the offering plate to look at Thank you, Jan. Could you say that again louder? The pledge cards can be placed in the offering plate. So if you would like to make a pledge and they're, they're around and you can uh, sign up and put it in the offering plate uh, or give it to Jan and, and we'll, we'll get it. All right, thank you. So, I'm not quitting my day job, but... <laughs> I threw that a couple of years ago for a children's story. And I'll bet you can guess who it is. So what was a crazy man sitting in water with wild hair? And anyway, it's supposed to be John the Baptizer. And I think it kind of looks like him. Like I said, I'm not going to quit my day job. What on earth got into this man? Well, God got into him. But just think about his life. According to the New Testament, his father was a high priest. He was from a wealthy family, probably had a good education, but he decided to go off and live out in the wilderness in a cave. Uh, there's, there, there's people who think they know where his cave is today. You know how they have that for everything. They know, you know where, uh, where things are, or where they think they are. But this, like many people, we, we hear about him, you know, we see him in cartoons, that guy that's up on top of a mountain, and you come up and you ask him, you know, what's, what's the meaning of life? Well, people go off and they, they go to caves to pray, out in the wilderness to pray. Jesus went out in the wilderness to pray. John was not, at first, John the Baptist. He was just John. His name was given to him according to the New Testament um, by like an angel. And his, and his mother couldn't conceive and it was like he had a miracle birth too. And... Um, so he goes out, he leaves his family, he goes out into the wilderness, and he fasts and he prays. They say that he wore the roughest clothes, camel's hair, a leather belt. So he, he left the fancy trappings of his family behind and, uh, and dressed rough. And um, he, they say he ate locusts and wild honey, and we... You know, Bible theologians talk about that, and we say, well, he just really meant locust beans, not the bug. But other people say, nah, he ate the bugs. So, you know, what, the, what are, the point is, he lived like this wild man out in the hills. And then they started preaching. I don't know who he could preach to, who, who's out there, but he started, he started telling people that they needed to get baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. They needed to do better. And, and this was his story. It's the story of Jesus, of course, but in the Gospel according to Matthew, this is how the text is. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, repent is a word that means expand your heart and your mind, change your life. 
It means more than just be sorry for your sins. Um, repent, change your life, open your heart, open your mind, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. And the, that it was the river Jordan is, I think, important that he chose that place. And I'll explain why in a little bit. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, the, his dad's people, you know, the educated uh, people who had uh, fine clothes and, and were successful and were religiously righteous and pure, he did not seem to get along with them very well. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for his baptism, um, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance, and do not presume to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. I don't know about uh, that, but you know, having a birthright, like if, uh, if you go with the Quakers, there's Quakers and then there's birthright Quakers. Birthright Quakers means they were born Quakers. And that somehow makes them, does that make them better or make them worse? It's hard to say. <coughs> you consider it better if you were born into money or you made it yourself. You consider it better if you're, you're born into a famous family or you made them famous. Do you think it's better if your families were a saint or you're a saint? Hmm. Well, he didn't, he didn't take that, uh, that your heritage mattered one bit. He didn't care who your family was. He came from a good family, and he didn't care if these people came from good families. Um, he said, don't, don't say Abraham is our father. God can take stones and make children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees, therefore every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the granary of the chaff. He will burn with unquenchable fire. Do you remember your baptism? I don't remember my first one, but I remember my second one because I was one of those Anabaptists. Um, I was baptized as a little baby. That's the way we do things around here, because we trust that, um, that when a baby is born, they are already a part of the community of Christ, and baptism is a sign of that. Just like circumcision is a sign that a little boy is a Jewish boy, and even though he doesn't know anything about Moses or the law or anything at that point, it's a form of inclusion. And it's the sacrament of God's grace. So most of us here were baptized as babies. And I was too. But I also remember when I was like about 18 years old in a pond in Pennsylvania. I won't forget that. But baptism comes from John the Baptist. It, it may have come from his watching his dad do... Uh, high priestly cleaning jobs. Because when you were a high priest or a priest and you were going to serve in the temple, you had to wash first, you had to purify yourself. Muslims do this before they pray. They do what's called wudu. They wash both hands up to the wrist, they wash both feet, they wash their face, they even snort a little bit of water up their nose, and then they go pray. If you've ever been at a truck stop or along the way and you see a, a Muslim person with their feet up in the sink, it's because they're getting ready to pray. Um, they wash before they pray. 
this is something that we all understand. Some of you washed before you came to church today. And, and so it is that we understand that, that baptism is a reference to a cleansing. And, but it was something just for the priests. But with John the, uh, the baptizer, well, there was also the mikvah for women after they were unclean. Or, or anyone else, there were certain times they were baptized. But John brought it in and gave it a new meaning. He made it a transitional moment in your life. A moment of repentance and a moment of change for the person and the nation. Uh, a couple of things he did that were different was instead of it being at the temple, it was outside. Remember when we had church outside in the parking lot? Some people loved that, other people not so much. That's the way life is. But, but there it is. Um, he, the, the problem with the temple is that if you're not at the temple, you can't do it. But if your temple is outside, then you can go outside pretty easily. So John the baptizer brought God out of the temple, if you will, and out into nature so that so God was already there, but so that people could experience God right where they were. But he went to a particular place in nature. He went to the Jordan River. So this was a new thing. It doesn't, we can't really find a scripture in the... In the Hebrew scriptures that say to start baptizing people like this. This was his own insight. This was his own mystical journey with God that he started doing this. But there's another thing. He did it in the Jordan River. And that's the river where they originally entered into the Holy Land according to the Pentateuch. They were slaves in Egypt. And they left Egypt and went across Sinai and up. And they came in from the east into the Holy Land across the Jordan River. And there's stories about how Joshua got them across the Jordan River. And the reason why to go to the Jordan River, and, and there's, they say that he was in the east, so he, one of the ways of looking at this is he was giving them this book, we really messed up the nation. It's not the way it should be. It's unjust, it's unfair, there's a lot of corruption, there's a lot of problems. But when you come out here and get baptized, when you reverence God and respect God, when you change your ways, not only are you changing your ways, but we're coming into the Jordan, we're coming into the land again. We're going to try to do it better this time. So there was a, a national repentance feeling about it as well. He was calling for the nation to become just and fair. It was a tr transitional step, not the final step. He didn't see himself as the end of all things, but pointed to uh, something that would come after, Jesus Christ who would come after. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And it was um, an initiation, an invitation. Perhaps Jesus needed John the Baptist. Perhaps you need a John the Baptist in your life. Someone who wakes you up and shakes you up out of your ordinary way of looking at things and invites you to more. That you can be more than you are now. That you can live more fully and righteously in the world. And the world certainly needs that. So however it came to Jesus, it was an invitation to Jesus. And the spiritual path goes like this. It's also... It's usually an invitation of some kind, some kind of initiation. You may have a dream, a vision. It could happen to you right here and right now, where something I say. I know one minister, and I said, how is it that you got your call to ministry? And he says, I was in church, and I was singing, Here I Am, Lord. And he sung, Here I Am, Lord, many times. But that day, it was a divine moment, and he never turned back. He's a minister to this day. But it happened in church. His initiation, in a sense, into this next stage of his life, it can happen anywhere. It doesn't have to happen in the temple. It can happen in a river. It can happen anywhere. But there's an initiation. And after the initiation, there's usually a purification, a preparation. We don't go right from saying yes to service right away. Many times... We have to work out of the while. We have to educate ourselves, and we have to unlearn things. Um, we, we have to have things in our lives cleaned up. 
it's awful when, when people try to clean your life without cleaning their own life first. Because you know how messy that is and how unpleasant that is for someone to talk about your yard when their yard is worse. Right? To talk about your car when their car is worse. To talk about your soul when their soul is worse. They've got clearly have some internal work to do. So after Jesus went into the wilderness and he had a, a experience of temptation, it was a purification experience, so why not us? The way I look at it is uh, a couple of scriptures. Our God is a consuming fire, it says in Hebrews. God is love, it says in 1 John, so you can put it together that our God is a consuming fire of love. There is a cleansing process. God wants us to stop hurting ourselves and hurting others. God wants us to live in a way that blesses ourselves and blesses others, that loves ourselves, that loves others, that treats ourselves with justice and treats others with justice, that cares for others, that does the right thing. So we have some purification to do. And then after that, there's often some kind of unification and service. So there's an emptying and a filling. So that's John the Baptist was an initiator, but it was a whole life. Do you have a John the Baptist in your life? Who was it? They say religion is more caught than taught. That usually there's a person that you looked at and you said, hmm, they've got something. There's something about them that's beautiful. There's something about them that's real. There's something about them. And so that's a, a John the Baptist to you, if that's the case. Maybe you've had a number of them. And so a John the Baptist person is a person who points to Christ. A John the Baptist person is, is, could be a teacher for a time, an initiator who helps you get started, but then he steps back. For example, John the Baptist says in another scripture, he must increase, meaning Jesus, but I must decrease. So that John the Baptist doesn't point to himself or herself, but points to Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So it's someone who points a person to God. And are you somebody's John the Baptist? Has anyone looked at you and said and thought to themselves, Because of you, I want to follow God. Because of you, I want to do the right thing. Because of you, I want to be kind and honest. Because of you, I want to follow Jesus. I hope so. So let me be a John the Baptist for a minute. My hair, uh, I don't have the leather shirt. I'm not wearing, I mean the leather belt and the camel shirt. And, I, and, I, and I'm not eating any locusts today. But I can be John in this way. I can tell you what he said. The time is fulfilled. This is the time. The God stuff is right here. Repent. Repent means open your heart, open your mind, let God purify you for service. Repent. Open your heart right now. If you don't, you will have a lesser life. You will not live as fully and richly and abundantly as you could if you do not open your life to love, to God, to this Jesus way. That's the way we understand it here in the Christian world. And give yourself to this over and over every day for the rest of your life. The water will become fire, the water will become wine, the water will become a path. And um, so Jesus transcends John the baptizer in water. I have another picture. This is a... Uh, this is, starts out as water. And in the bottom, it's supposed to be wine. Does it look like that? Well. <laughs> hey. My youngest child drew this, and I'm putting it on my refrigerator. Yeah, water.
water to wine. Jesus turns water to wine. Jesus walks on water. And John the baptizer says that, that he baptizes with water, but Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so this fire and wine is something to think about as we take communion today. Because there is something sacred about sharing the bread and cup together. Uh, a word before we begin. We have open communion here because we see communion as a sacrament of God's love for you. And because God loves every one of you, no one is at all excluded from taking communion. Because God loves you, you are welcome. So we don't care who you are or what you believe or what you think. We know that God loves you. So this communion is for you. This is how we understand God's love and God's way. So Jill, I've asked if you would help out this morning. Would you come up and stand up here in front because you're going to have to move some things around here. So I invite you to um, the invitation to communion. I'm going to read that and then there's a prayer for us to share. We are of the new covenant. We are people of love, hope, peace, and joy. All are invited to join in the sacred meal. Please, in the prayer, let's pray it together in unison, and it comes from St. Augustine of Hippo. Let the just rejoice, for their justifier is born. Let the sick and infirm rejoice, for their Savior is born. Let the captives rejoice, for their Redeemer is born. Let the slaves rejoice, for their master is born. Let free men rejoice, for their liberator is born. Let all Christians rejoice, for Jesus Christ is born. Gathered in this place of worship, we praise you, God, and join the angels in singing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, Jill, I need you to go get the bread that's there. That's a big loaf. Take the big loaf. And uh, take it in your hands. And put the plate down and take the loaf. Yeah. Yep, pick it up. The, the, the loaf, the bread. Touch the bread. Grab the bread. Yes. All right. One of the things we do at our church is we affirm the feminine. We know that God is beyond male and female. And we love at communion. Uh, it used to be that we always had Terry doing communion. But now we do. Uh, Jill is uh, being our priest today with me. Okay, so we remember on the night of his betrayal and desertion, on the eve of his death, Jesus gathered his disciples for the feast of Passover. Jesus took the bread. So hold up the bread, Jill. And after giving thanks to you, God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. So go ahead and break it and hold it out again. Take and eat. This is my body. It represents the body of Christ. We remember the body of Christ. Okay, thank you. Put that down and then get the, the, the pitcher and uh, is there a pitcher and a glass and a cup. Yes. All right. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, I'll pour a little in. All right. This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. We see the sacrifice of Jesus as the cross as a sacrifice of love, as an obedience to God, and a bringing of the divine into the most horrible circumstances. In his death, there was redemption for the world. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of the faith. You can put it down. Christ's death, O oh God, we proclaim. Christ's resurrection, we declare. Christ's coming, we await. Glory be to you, O oh God. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and cup and all of us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, the church, your servant people, that we may be the light in the world for all these gifts. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus. Now Jill is going to stand on one side and I am going to stand on the other. We will give you a piece of bread in your hand and 
tell you that God loves you, and then we invite you to eat the bread, go over, take a cup, drink the cup, and then put the, the cup in the bin, and then return to your seats. And so we'll come up through the middle and take it. Remember, everyone is welcome, but no one has to take anything they don't want to. So if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But you're all welcome to do it. And if you have a mobility issue and need us to bring it to you, we will do that as well. Come.
Wasn't that nice? We're in this together. God makes us who are not family to become family. God loves each and every one of us, and we are to increase goodness in the world. There is a, a last, there's a prayer of thanksgiving after communion. I invite you to join me in the bulletin. Let's pray this together. Glorious God, we thank you for this meal, the strength we receive. Thank you for the hope that, that a better world is possible. We are the agents for peace. It is our time to walk in the light and bring joy to the world. In the name of Christ, the babe and the manger, we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand if you wish and join in the last hymn, Blessed Be the God of Israel. As people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. 